Welcome on board the brand new Beneto First 27, the biggest of the new first fleet. My name is Tit Pleunik and today I will guide you throughout the boat. The boat is building on the 40 years Beneto First famous heritage and it's still staying true to its original promise, delivering modern and accessible sailing experience. F new first boats are planning boats and this is the key difference we would like to show you in this video today. Of course, that does not go on the account of safety, neither comfort. The boat perfectly works in the family cruising setup, family of four, maybe even up to six. You can go out on a day sailing alone or in two as a couple. Of course, she will also bring back home trophies from the club races where you will go fully crewed, solo, double-handed, whichever setup you might need. She will again and again surprise you by getting on a plane in as little as 12 knots of wind, as you can see now. And uh, please do take advantage of this 360 degree video virtual reality tour, where we will first check the interior and all the cruising and living onboard feature hiding inside this 8 meter pocket cruiser. And then in the second part, we will show you the boat in, in her natural environment, under the sails, as we are doing right now, and uh, show you how the boat is planning, how the cockpit and ergonomy works. But first, let's jump, let's jump back to the beginning of the day, back in the marina. So welcome inside of the first 27. The boat is having all key amenities for comfortable and cozy cruising for up to four persons. So we have a separated front cabin. There is a galley with fresh water tank, huge open space saloon with a table. There are two more berths in the stern and we even have a classic marine toilet in the completely separated room. So in the next couple of minutes, I will explain you all of these features. But first, I would like to touch a little bit about the philosophy, how we were designing this interior. So all the time, we were really weight sensitive. So we really wanted to make sure that the uh, interior doesn't decrease or kill the sailing potential of the boat, because this is our main promise. So before we touch actual cruising features, some more technical details under the stairs, there is an inboard engine, Yanar, with 10 horsepowers, with very simple and straightforward shaft drive, so very reliable system. Just above it, there is an electrical panel, so the main control panel. panel. The, the, the good thing is that it's really easy accessible also from the outside, so once you learn the position of the switches, you can, you can control things from the outside without even looking. First part, is a standard 12 volt installation and then the second part are all the different options you can choose to equip the interior and make the cruising more comfortable. Interior is light but there is another layer so most of the equipment it's also modular what, which, with which I mean that you can easily remove it. So for the owners who have some cloud racing ambitions there is very easy to re even reduce the weight of boat and same another let's say 100 kilos by removing the cushions tables, uh, uh, magnetic doors and some other equipment. Let's check how the living on board will actually look like. On the first, I would really like to point out that there is significant amount of light in this open space saloon. So we have the windows on the side of the hull, but there are also coach roof windows, huge entrance of course, and a um, huge hatch above the midsection, which we will, which we will uh, check just after. So on the start, I said that the boat can sleep up to four adults. So two are in the front cabin, which we'll check at the end. And then here on both sides, you have two more berths where you can really comfortably sleep. So it's quite wide. Keep in mind, we are on just eight meter sailing boat. Um, there is important uh, notice. So the area underneath all four berths it's not a storage place, but these are closed eight chambers. So this insubmersibility area is making this boat unsinkable, which is really an important safety feature of this boat. However, the fact that these areas under the berths are closed doesn't mean that there is not sufficient amount of uh, storage space. 
So here under birds on both sides, you have a lot of area for technicals, technical equipment, maybe food and drinks. Um, of course, we were also thinking about the, the, the personal belongings, but we didn't solve it in a traditional way. So usually in the interior of traditional boats, you will find the wooden drawers or uh, closets. So we designed this removable crew bags. The idea is that you can really easily take these bags off. You take them home. So when you come on board, you just simply hang them. And that's how you avoid really annoying repacking either in the car or in the boat or sliding bags which are moving around when you're sailing and making damage in the interior. So the central part of the boat is taken by the foldable table. It can be half extended like now or also fully extended. It's fixed with the screw in the center, uh, which is not a typical way how these tables are usually um, attached. But the thing is that because there is no support underneath, you can really easily move in the, in the interior even if the table is open. So believe me, your knees will be grateful. Under the port bench, there is an ice box by standard, which can be upgraded with a proper um, cooling panel and the compressor installed in the back of the boat. So all the cruising feature you really need are just at hand. So at this point, uh, I will move uh, the point of view just uh, in front of the mass support and we will check the midsection of the boat because despite really small place, basically a little bit more than one square meter, there are many, many different modes how you can use this area. So first, the most obvious use of the midsection of the boat is the passage to the front cabin, the obvious one, and of course the galley. So the galley is having the sink with fresh water system. The same fresh water tank is also used for the shower on the stern. There is a single gas burner, handy storage place in behind. And of course, there is additional storage place just underneath the galley where you will find enough space for all the kitchen equipment. For the next mode of the area, I will move your point of view on the galley so you will have the complete view of the room. Just behind the foldable magnetic doors, we've placed the proper marine toilet. So when you close the doors to the front cabin and to the saloon, you, can, you get a completely private space for the toilet. I agree that this area where the toilet is placed is really small, but by closing the doors, you gain extra room and complete privacy when you're using the toilet. Just above you, there is huge hatch, so there is sufficient ventilation. And of course, if, if needed, you could even stand up. In the corner, we place the custom built uh, black water tank. So it's really built completely up to the regulations. So now we'll move to the front cabin. The last mode of this mid section is actually extension of the front cabin because I can close the toilet completely. That's very important because this is the place where I will sleep and I can close the doors towards the saloon. So I gain complete privacy. The front cabin can offer two decent berths. So I'm pretty tall and can really comfortably sleep here. If I will be actually sleeping here, I can easily move out these two additional crew bags, which are for the personal belongings in the front cabin. Uh, and then there are two more things, which is all the way in the bow, if you turn around. So there is the anchor locker where you store the anchors, a quite important cruising feature, of course, accessible from the deck. And there is inspection hatch to the, to the crash box, which is really rare safety feature on this size of the boat. As you can see, there are many details and unique solutions, which are enabling that you can really comfortable, comfortably cruising on this eight meter boat. I don't know if you noticed, but the table, which was here in the middle of saloon, I've moved it to the, to the, to the cockpit. Uh, one thing is you can see how it's used in the uh, outside and of course the, the, the other main point I would like to make here is this huge open space saloon 
please keep in mind we are just on eight meter boat uh, so it's really it's i mean you can really easily and comfortably welcome four up to, or even up to six persons in inside the boat uh, so now it's time to to go out leave the marina and hoist the sails So welcome on board with me today, my colleague Marusha. She will help on the helm and we will show you the first 27 in, in team of two. Uh, while we, are, we will be leaving the marina, I will explain you some technical details and background of the first 27. So the design team and the naval architect Samuel, Samuel Manuart uh, designing this boat is having very strong racing background and this can be, this can be seen in, in many aspects of the boat. So on one hand side we are using the advanced technology in the production of this boat, so the complete boat is vacuum infused, built in, uh, with PVC foam in the core and uh, this makes the structure of this boat significantly lighter uh, than, uh, than, than other boats on the market. And on the other hand side, we are also taking advantage of the, of the keel design, uh, which is providing extremely low center of gravity. So the boat is equipped with a T-bulb, LED bottom, uh, LED bulb uh, on the bottom, so that really on one meter 70 draft, and that really put the center of gravity of the boat very low. Additionally, the hull of the boat is really, really um, marked with the very strong chines all along the boat, which are very low above the water. And that makes this boat extremely wide on the water line compared to the width of the boat uh, upper, uh, higher up. And, uh, and this gives the hull really, really good initial stability. So it gives you some more time before it's really starting healing more compared and this is huge advantage compared to the round uh, hull shapes and of course really proves in the downwind sailing because the flat hull gives you a lot of planning potential but we'll get there uh, secondly the the, the the boat is having increased bow volume uh, this is also something from, from racing boats can be seen, you know, the, the scout, scout designs. We're not in such extreme yet, but uh, the, 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 the increased volume of the boat gives you, gives you much more um, dry sailing experience and of course helps you get through to, uh, all over the waves. So the boat is really not no, nose diving. So because of all mentioned, so the, 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 the safety, um, safety which is coming from the initial hull stability, kill stabi kill, uh, st stability provided from the kill and, um, and increased volume of the boat. The handling of this boat is very easy. This goes especially thanks to twin rudders. We'll check them in details later, also in downwind section. But all together, mentioning all together, this boat is really ticking all the boxes which are crucial for comfortable and, and, and relaxed sailing. So it can be cruising, it can be day sailing, whichever mode you are in. It really gives you feeling of safety and perfect control. So because of all mentioned safety features, design features, how this boat and how this boat is built, this boat is having a B category, which is there are very few boats with the B category in this length. Uh, on the market and this is the final proof uh, that also the, the, the international boat building standards support what I'm just saying. Uh, so before we leave out uh, on the, to the marina, I would also like to, 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 to touch the rig. So the boat is equipped with uh, aluminum Seldan mast, boom, retractable bowsprit uh, in the front. Uh, in the standard configuration of the boat, you have very handy and, uh, and, and practical uh, furling jeep and the mainsail on the sliders. So what we'll, what we'll do today, we will, we will, uh, we will have a, 
uh, first uh, an upwind part where I will explain you how the cockpit area works so how were we thinking about the ergonomy and, uh, and, and prove you how easy is this boat to handle in two uh, and then uh, of course there comes the fun part so after we after we will uh, we will hoist the furling janaker and uh, during the downwind planning i will explain you why this boat is really give you perfect control which are all the safety features which i didn't mention yet and uh, and hopefully give you the clear idea and sailing experience of the first 27. So, welcome on the water on this magnificent day. We have 10, 12 knots of wind gusting up to maybe 15 from time to time. So, just ideal to show what this boat is built for. But let me first open the jib. And we turn off the engine. Very, very nice. So on this upwind part, I would like to show you how the ergonomy and uh, handling uh, of the, all the controls in the, in the cockpit area works. And um, we were really thinking carefully how we positioned deck equipment and all the controls because we are well aware, well aware that the boat needs to, to work in different setups like we are just in two at the moment uh, of course you will be sailing fully crewed and from time to time you will be also sailing alone but before I show you how it works um, as you can see we really have I mean it's, it's a really it's quite spacious cockpit area open on the stern and then in the central part you have the benches for, for, more comfortable, for more comfortable living. And this is where you spend most of your time when in the boat. So let me show you how, how I would sail this boat if I would be alone. May I, Marusha? Thank you. So in the back here, behind, with, on my left hand, you have the mainsail traveler. And also then I can, I can easily have also the main sheet here on my knee if I would need it. Uh, then at the moment the jeep is on the lee side. If I would have a longer solo uh, single-handed uh, tack, I would then uh, cross sit the, the jeep here on the, on the windward winch. And uh, the number of ropes is really minimal, minimum that you need to control all the, all the, all the sails and, and, uh, and the controls. And where needed, we added extra purchases. So like, for example, the, 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 the Vang and so, you're having a really a lot of force. I mean, it's light, but it, you generate a lot of force because of all the purchases. For all the control lines on the coach roof, there are two dedicated, two, two dedicated winches. Uh, and like I said, from, from, from here, I'm in reach of all the mainsail and, and other controls. Um, because the rudders are well balanced, uh, I can easily leave them, I can easily leave the tier for a while. I can go down, trim the jib. You have a nice down hauler with again a lot of purchase. So even if the jib is fully powered, I can easily close the leech line. And the jib is having a dedicated set of winches. Enjoy! So if you're, you've just saw how the, the, the ergonomy and controls are working for single-handed or double-handed as we are sailing now. But the best thing is that we were really thinking about how this would work also for fully crewed setup. And you can see that this cockpit is really more than, more than big enough for that. I think that at the end, at least one or two sailors will end up in my favorite position for cruising. 
because you can really find yourself a comfortable position here for some longer, longer cruisings. When I say single handle or double handle, don't misunderstand me. I'm really not meaning racing, right? Going for an afternoon sail alone, the boat is really built to, to, to offer you that. Or if you go with a couple or as a family, I mean, having kids on board when they are still smaller, uh, that, that's best case double-handed. On this case, on this point, I would like to point out another detail. I'm not sure if you notice it, but the, the, the bottom diagonal is moved inside, not attached on the, on, the outside, on the outside of the hull. And this is not so common on this side of the boat, but of course it gives you great advantage of very easily moving forward and backward without, without any climbing. If I return back to the cockpit, a few more things to say. So the, 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 the volume under the benches is not the interior, but is storage space accessible from outside. So that's where you will store all your fenders and marine ropes. Gas bottle is also in this area and so. So I've just hoisted the furling Jenneker, get everything ready. Uh, and before we, 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 we open the Jenneker, I would just like to point, one thing, point out one thing that uh, in this upwind part, we were simply sailing at a displacement speed of the boat. Nothing really sensational, except of course, you have full control of the boat. Everything is on place. The things are, forces are low and so. But actually the real fun and the, the main potential and the main promise and the difference of the first 27 can be best shown in downwind sailing because that's, that's where the boat is exceeding the displacement speed and it start planning. Uh, so let me show you how this works out. Okay, let's bear away a bit. Okay. So like I said, it's easily you can unfurl everything from the cockpit Okay, I'll furl the jib. Sorry. And uh, so on this point, uh, for the downwind part, I will invite you on the stern because from the stern, we can best see what I will talk about. So welcome on the stern. From here you can best see what is main and best promise of the Benetton First 27 and this is planning downwind. If you look to the back, it's about 15, 16 knots of the wind and with the full main and, uh, and the fractional furling Jenneker, we are doing about nine knots at the moment. So definitely planning you can you can see that the, the the it's really easy going sailing right i mean we are i mean i'm actually doing nothing but but talking and marusha is having everything perfectly under control and that's where we come back to the to the start right when we were talking about the hull shape right so the the leeward chine it's really sitting in the water and this is what we called on before this um, initial hull stability at low healing angles. So at the moment the boat really nicely sits on this chine. And of course, I mean, then it comes the, then it comes the kill. Then it comes the kill, which is having very low center of gravity and it's giving us huge stability. So both together, it's really, really perfect and safe platform. I will come to safety next. But just before, all this is nothing if you don't have control over the boat. And here we come to the, to the twin rudders. So they are angled a bit. 
and because the, the hull is white on the water line, that means that one comes partly out of the water, as you can see now, in this nice gust. And then the lee side, the lee, the lee rudder blade, is always vertical in the water with perfect and full control. So as you can see, I mean, it's, it's nothing spectacular except that we are doing 10 knots of speed and having perfect, perfect control. So as one of the last things I would like to touch in our, in our sailing trip, it's safety, right? In many, many times throughout the video, I was referring that this boat is really safe. And uh, of course, as said a few times now, stability, first thing. We cannot say that the boat is safe if it's not stable. And I think that with this fantastic sailing and planning downwind, we are definitely proving it. Uh, secondly, of course, there are also a few other features that the boat is having, right? So it's unsinkable with three separated insubmersibility chambers, all together three cubic meters. And please don't forget on the start, we said that the light craft condition, basically the weight of the boat as we have it now, more or less is 1,700 kilograms. So really safe, even if you blow one chamber, you stay afloat. Plus that there is foam in the sandwich construction. So this is by default also floating. All the way in the front, something really from racing world, but still very good, good thing to have, crash box. So if you will go for some night sailings and so, or some more longer, longer cruisings and so, in case you hit some, in case you hit something, there is the crash box in the, in the, in the bow. I already mentioned the bow volume, which is increased bow volume, which is at the end, of course, for the, 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 the obvious uh, effect is that the hull, the, 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 the deck is dry, right? We are actually having some swell here, but you can see that there is no water coming over, over the deck. Uh, and then, uh, of course, regarding safety, this boat is almost impossible to nose dive because it lifts up the boat. And when we add to that already mentioned twin rudders and the complete control you have, B category of the boat, uh, this is for sure one of the safest boats on the market in its length category. One of the last details here on the stern is also the bathing ladder. It's just below from your viewing point. Uh, it's all the time there, so you can very easily, you can very easily open it and um, it can be open also from the water. So on one hand side, it's a cruising feature for going swimming, but at the same time, it's also reboarding equipment. So for the end, I would just like to say one more thing that planning downwind is way, way safer and of course, much, much more fun than uh, rolling at the displacement speed, right? On displacement boats, when the wind picks up, all this energy ends up more or less in rolling. Here it's transferred to speed and that's what gives you control. You can choose your wave in between the waves. You're basically faster than the waves and that gives you, I mean, uncomparable, much, I mean, much, much more fun and of course, much, much, much more safety. So before I finish, we'll just uh, do a short jibe so we don't go too much out when the wind is picking up even more and the sun is getting down. So a short jibe and I'll be back. So from your position, you can also see the, the way how the Jenneker trim was designed, so I always had the Jenneker on the windward. So Marusha, I'm ready. So, 
nothing spectacular. And in the meantime, the wind picked up on 20 knots, so easy handling. So in the start of this video, I said that this seventh incarnation of famous first range is bringing modern, safe and fun sailing experience to everybody. So make it as accessible as possible. And I'm, I hope and I'm certain that this video and this walkthrough proved some of, the, our, some of our main points. Uh, and I hope uh, it was interesting. Uh, this is one of the safest boats on the market, safer than most of the boats in the length category and at the same time faster and much more fun. So all in all, I really think this is an ultimate pocket cruiser, all crab racer, boat in one boat. And of course, uh, being a sailor, I cannot miss the opportunity to to, 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 to enjoy this ride until the sun goes down. So uh, thank you for watching and uh, I hope you like the tour and of course our new Veneto First 27. Enjoy and fair winds. May I? Sure. Oh.